All right, buckle up, because we're diving into one of the biggest head scratchers in UFO history. The McMinnville UFO photos. It's a classic. You're into UFOs, so we're unpacking this wild case from like 1950. So picture it, a farm in McMinnville, Oregon. Paul and Evelyn Trent, they see something strange in the sky, something they say was a UFO. Yeah. What do they do? Grab their camera, snap a couple of pictures, and boom, those pictures become world famous. And you know what's really interesting about these photos? It's not just some blurry lights way up high, you know? These photos, they showed this distinct object, metallic looking, disc shaped. They were clear enough that people really took notice. And we're not just talking about some blurry internet thing. These pictures, they were on the front page of the local paper. They even got the attention of the US Air Force, which is wild. Okay, so we've got what seems like a UFO sighting, clear photos, even the government's interested. So where do we even start with something like this? Well, you gotta understand, this case, like a lot of these UFO things, it's a real head scratcher. Was it actually a UFO or was it all a big hoax? That's the question. Right. Right. Because we can't just assume every weird shape in the sky is alien. Right? Exactly. And the McMinnville case, it's like the perfect example of how people see the same evidence in totally different ways. So let's start with the skeptics, the folks who think it's all a hoax. One of their big arguments is that the thing in those photos it could have been a model. Like, imagine a hubcap or something hanging from a string or a wire. So they're saying the Trents, they staged the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, there are some things that make them think that. Critics have pointed out that the Trent story, it's changed a little over time, you know, like little details about how big the object was, how it was moving, even when things happened. These inconsistencies, some people say it makes the whole thing seem less believable. Yeah, it makes you wonder, right, like, are these inconsistencies just honest mistakes? Or were they trying to pull one over on everybody? Like, trying to solve a puzzle, but um, some of the pieces are missing. Totally. And to make things even trickier, some people who are skeptical, they say that the object it could have been something totally normal, like a weather balloon or a weird bird, or even just light reflecting off a cloud in a funny way. Oh, yeah, like our eyes playing tricks on us. Exactly. Especially back then, photography wasn't as good as it is now, right? So it was much easier for things to look different in pictures than they did in real life. That's true. Yeah. But even with all that skepticism, there's a whole other side to this. There are people who believe 100% that these photos are the real deal. What makes them so sure? Well, one of the biggest pieces of evidence on that side comes from this guy, Dr. Bruce McAbee. He was a really respected optical physicist, and he spent a lot of time studying these pictures. Okay, so we've got a real scientist, an expert in optics, looking at these photos. Yeah, and he was thorough. And in his conclusion, he couldn't find any proof that it was a hoax. Wow, so not fake, at least according to him. Right, and he didn't just glance at them, he went deep. He used this thing called photogrammetry. Basically, he studied how the light and shadows were hitting the object to figure out its shape and where it was in the air. He even looked at the angles, how it seemed to be moving, searching for any little hint of strings or supports, anything that would scream fake. But you know what? He came up empty. It seemed to be a solid 3D thing, not some flat model. So not just some random blurry shape. We're talking about a real physical object, at least as far as his analysis goes. Exactly. And here's the thing that makes it even more interesting. The Trents, they weren't the only ones who said they saw something weird in the sky that day. Wait, so other people saw it too. It wasn't just the Trents saying, hey, we saw something up there. Nope, not at all. You had all these other folks in McMinnville that came forward saying they saw the same thing, a disc-shaped object just like in the photos. Okay, so now it's not just one couple. It's multiple people saying they saw the same thing gotta mean something right yeah it definitely adds to the mystery you know now to be fair to the skeptics some people said well maybe these other people they just saw the photos in the news and jumped on the bandwagon right like they wanted to be a part of the story or maybe they started remembering things differently because of what they'd seen in the paper yeah you got it that's totally possible but here's the cash in some of those reports they popped up before the trends even went public with their photos whoa really so it's not like they were influenced by the media or anything because the story hadn't even broken yet. Exactly. So if it was all a big hoax by the trends, how do you explain those other people saying they saw it too, even before anyone knew about the trends? Yeah, that's a tough one to explain. It makes you realize, though, how important context is. We're talking about stuff that happened over 70 years ago. To really get this whole McMinnville thing, we got to try to imagine what it was like back then. Oh, absolutely. It's like... You can't understand the whole picture just by looking at one tiny piece of it, right? 
In the 1950s, that was a wild time for UFOs. Oh, yeah. UFOs are like all the rage back then, right? They were huge. All over the world, people were seeing UFOs left and right. And it wasn't just quick glimpses either. People were telling these detailed stories. They were taking pictures the whole nine yards. There were a few reasons for all this UFO excitement. The Cold War was in full swing, so everyone was kind of nervous, like, are the Russians going to attack? You also had all this new technology popping up, jet planes, rockets, things like that. So the idea of advanced flying machines it didn't seem so crazy anymore. And then you had science fiction, which was really starting to take off. Right, like books, movies, even radio shows. Yeah. They all had aliens and spaceships. It was everywhere. Exactly. So you've got all this anxiety from the Cold War, crazy new technology, and everyone's obsessed with aliens. It was the perfect recipe for a UFO frenzy. So the McMinnville photos, they weren't just some random thing. They were part of this huge cultural moment that was happening all over the world. 100%. To really understand how big of a deal the McMinnville photos were, you got to look at them alongside all the other major UFO stuff happening at the time. Like Roswell. Isn't that like the most famous UFO thing ever? Definitely. That was 1947, just a few years before McMinnville. And Roswell, with all the secrecy and the government cover-ups and everything, it just made people even more fascinated by UFOs. And then in 52, you had the Washington, D.C. sightings. The Washington, D.C. sightings. I don't know much about that one. So basically, you had all these unidentified objects showing up on radar over Washington, D.C. We're talking over the White House, the Capitol building, places like that. And it wasn't just some random radar blips either. These were experienced military guys. They knew what they were doing. They even got high-ranking government officials involved because it was such a big deal. So this wasn't just some random dude seeing lights in the sky. This was the military with their fancy radar saying, yeah, there's something up there and we don't know what it is. Exactly. It wasn't just a one-time thing either. It happened multiple times that summer over D.C. And just like Roswell, it became this huge news story that just kept feeding the UFO frenzy. Okay, so we've got Roswell in 47, McMinnville in 50, and then the D.C. sightings in 52. It's like each thing just made the next one even bigger. Totally. And here's the crazy part. Even though the McMinnville photos were just one part of this much bigger UFO thing, they've had this lasting impact on how people see UFOs even today. That's so true. It's like even if you don't believe in UFOs, you still know what the McMinnville photos look like. They're in documentaries, books, websites, everything. They're iconic. But why those photos? There were other UFO pictures from back then, right? They're, yeah, but the McMinnville photos, they just hit different for a few reasons. First of all, the photos themselves are just really well done, you know? You can actually see the object. It's not blurry or out of focus or anything. It's like this perfect little flying saucer against a clear sky. And then there's the fact that so many people have studied those photos, like Dr. Maccabee and his whole analysis. When a respected scientist like that can't find any evidence of a hoax, it makes people pay attention. Yeah, for sure. Even if you're skeptical, you got to admit, those photos are pretty convincing. They make you think, you know? Like, what if we're not alone? Absolutely. And that's why people are still talking about these photos after all these years. They captured this moment in time when everyone was looking up at the sky, wondering if maybe, just maybe, there was something else out there. It's like they captured this feeling, you know, like the whole world was holding its breath, mm. wondering if we were really alone out there. Totally. And you know, it's crazy. Even after all these years, People are still looking at those McMinnville photos and having that same sense of wonder. And it's not just about those photos. It's like they open the door for other people to share their own stories, to talk about what they'd seen. It's true. Whether you think it's a real UFO or not, those photos really got under people's skin. They've been studied and debated for like, what, over 70 years? And still, nobody knows for sure. That's what makes them so fascinating. There are things in this world, things we can see with our own eyes that we just can't explain. It's like a puzzle you can never quite finish. You see the big picture, but then there are these gaps, these missing pieces mm. that make you question everything. And sometimes those are the best puzzles, you know, the ones that keep you guessing. They remind us to keep asking questions, to be open to the possibility that there's more out there than we think. Okay, so after diving into all of this, the McMinnville photos, the people who said they saw it, the experts, the whole historical scene, where do we even land? What's the answer? That's the best part. You get to decide. We've laid out all the evidence, the arguments, all the different sides. Now it's up to you to weigh it all and come to your own conclusion. It's like we've been on a jury for a 70-year-long trial. We've heard it all, seen all the evidence, 
Now it's time to deliberate. Exactly. And remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. Maybe you're leaning toward the skeptical side. Those inconsistencies in the Trent's story, they can be pretty hard to ignore. Or maybe you're thinking, Dr. Maccabee, he knew his stuff, and those other witnesses, they couldn't have all made it up. Or hey, maybe you're somewhere in between, like you're totally sucked into the mystery, but you're not ready to say for sure what you believe. That's totally fine. Because you know what? I think the most important thing isn't about having the right answer. It's about being curious, being open-minded, and never losing that sense of wonder. Couldn't have said it better myself. Whether you think it's a UFO or a clever fake, the McMinnville photos have definitely earned their place in history. They keep us guessing, keep us looking up at the sky and wondering. It's true. A good mystery never gets old, right? So what do you think the McMinnville photo show, a real UFO, a hoax, or something else entirely? We'd love to hear your theories. That's it for a deep drive this week. Thanks for listening.